Talk to us about this particular operation, just how widespread and effective was it? Well, in terms of being widespread, it was really trying to hit everywhere across the internet, pretty much all at the same time. What we had was a troll farm, so an organization run from St. Petersburg in Russia that was hiring people off the street to run fake accounts kind of everywhere on the internet they could think of. There's reports of fake accounts on YouTube, Telegram, TikTok, Twitter. We found them on Instagram. Um, and what they were trying to do was make it look like there was large-scale support for the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So that's the widespread effect. But in terms of effect, all we saw was that they weren't very good at what they did. Um, a lot of their fake accounts kept on getting caught by the automated systems before we even investigated them and took them down. Uh, real people kept on calling them out as trolls. Um, and there were even cases when they would try to steer people towards celebrities or influencers on social media, and then they picked the wrong account. So, for example, at one point, they tried to steer people towards the UK Foreign Secretary, Liz Truss. And instead of finding the Foreign Secretary's page on Facebook, they found something that hadn't been used since 2018. So they were trying to spread themselves wide, um, but nothing we saw showed that they were actually having much of an impact this time. So it sounds like this particular operation wasn't very sophisticated. How unique was this operation? Is this something that you've seen before? We've seen attempts like this before in lots of different part, parts of the world. So, so we've taken down troll farms in the past, for example, in Nicaragua, in um, Albania. We've taken down other activity by Russian trolls as well. But there was an interesting twist to this case, and it's that the, the operation was really working in two halves. It was running a public channel on Telegram, which was trying to, if you like, crowdsource comments which were supporting Russia. And when it didn't get real crowdsource comments, it would use the fake accounts to go in instead. And it's the same operation running all these things. And then what the people behind the operation would do would be they'd do in the interviews on Russian state TV and, and supportive media and say, look what a great job we're doing. So it's like there were multiple layers of deception nestled inside one, one another, almost like a Russian doll. But ultimately, they were trying to make it look like they were effective, but they were using fakes to do it, and then the fakes got caught. In general, how effective has Russian have Russian disinformation campaigns actually been over the course of the last several months of this war on Ukraine? We've taken down, I think, about half a dozen different Russian operations that have been targeting Ukraine recently, so uh, since the war began. In general, what we've seen is that they've been struggling to get any kind of real engagement. Um, but we've also seen that they keep on trying, and this is the time to keep our foot on the gas. What we really need to do is, is take these operations as a lesson. We need to learn from them, and we need to keep looking, because we know threat actors like this are not going to go away. We need to take them seriously. And each time we find something like this, we need to explain to people, here's what it was. Here's how it worked. Here's the kind of content that they were pushing. Here's the way they were operating. Because this time around, they weren't very good at what they did. But we need to prepare for the next time. And that's what, as threat investigators, we always have to be ready for. Are you speaking directly with other big tech companies, Apple, Google, TikTok, Twitter, about coordinating efforts on this front? Whenever we do a threat report like this, we share with industry partners, we share with researchers, we share with uh, we share with the public. Right? We report these things, and that's because we found that that influence operations, they're a bit like mold growing in your house. They grow best in dark places, and so when you find them, there's two things you really need to do. You need to clean them up, but then you need to shine the light on them as well. You need to move them into a bright place. And we've always found that the more we can share information about these operations, the more we can make, make people aware of how they behave it's harder for them to come back. What keeps you up at night? I mean, we're heading into the U.S. midterms here in the United States. Have you seen activity uh, rising on that front? I'm a threat investigator, so investigations keep me up at night. It's, it, it's what we all do on the team. Um, in terms of the midterms, sorry, uh, we haven't seen any uptick in activity um, so far. For example, this Russian operation that we've taken down was really focused on the war in Ukraine, and it was all about pushing the Russian point of view. But again, operations like this are a lesson. And one of the big things from the Russian operation was that what they were trying to do was use a fake operation to make a more public operation look like it was working. And this is something we call perception hacking. It's trying to fool people that there's something big going on. If you like, it's like dropping an ice cube into the water and saying, look, there's an iceberg underneath. And that's the kind of tactic which could be very easily transferred to other areas. So we have to take threat actors like this seriously just because they were ham-fisted this time around. 
doesn't mean that they will be the next time. And so what we're looking out for as investigators and the thing that's keeping us up at night is making sure we keep ahead of whatever trends are out there. Meantime, we've been following the story about TikTok and the Chinese government or an entity uh, supported by the Chinese government trying to set up a stealth account on TikTok to target Western audiences with propaganda. You know, is this something that concerns you? If you look at our threat reporting over the last few years, we've taken down operations from around the world. We have seen operations from China, Iran, India. Um, I think it's more than 50 different countries that we, we've seen operations coming in from, more than two dozen different languages. And it seems like the idea is out there that influence operations are a thing. They're something that many different countries can run. And our job as threat investigators is to go and find them and particularly to shine a light on them and to share information about them as, as widely as we can, because the more different eyes we can get on this, the more we can try and catch them. With the Russian troll farm, it was really interesting. The way it was exposed was the troll farm was trying to hire people off the street and telling them, hey, come and work for us. One of the first people they hired turned out to be an undercover journalist okay. to expose the whole operation.